What are calories? In today's podcast, we discuss the basics of calories, what they are, where they come from, and how they are used in society today. Welcome to the Calorie Conundrum Podcast with Coach Strick. Join us as we expand the weight loss conversation to beyond just calories and dare to ask the question, why does eating less and exercising more sometimes not produce the desired results? Here's Coach Strick to discuss this calorie conundrum. Well, hello everyone. This is Coach Strick and today we're going to have a short discussion about calories. Everyone has heard of calories, and most know that if you eat too many calories, you will gain weight. But do you know what a calorie is? If you are a nutritionist, a personal trainer, or simply a self-made health geek, then you probably know what a calorie is. I'll give you a hint. Calories aren't the little tiny creatures that live in your closet and sew your clothes a little bit tighter every night. Calories are a unit of measure. The definition of a calorie is the amount of energy that is required to heat one kilogram of water one degree Celsius at sea level. Calories are a unit of measure, and as it relates to nutrition and food, they are the measure of potential energy stored in the food we eat. I will give you an example to help you understand this idea. If I gave you a bucket and said, go fill this bucket with a thousand calories, you might think to put some cookies or hamburgers or some other delicious food whose calories amount equated a thousand calories in the bucket, but technically you would be wrong. If I gave you the same bucket and I said go fill this bucket with a thousand inches or a thousand centimeters, you would probably just look at me weird. Why? Because you know that inches and centimeters are units of measure and not something you can fill a bucket with. So now that we're on the same page about what a calorie is, let's talk about where they came from. It is possible that the idea of the calorie was being discussed in science as early as the late 1700s. Scientists were looking to measure heat and the idea of using the calorie as a unit of measurement was being developed. The idea of the calorie though wasn't brought to the public's attention until Wilbur Atwater's 1887 article in Century Magazine where he defined what a calorie was. It's interesting to know that in more recent history, science, through the development of the international system of units, uses the joule as the unit of measurement of heat in many areas of science today. But the good old calorie is still used in nutrition. Or is it calorie? It gets a little more complicated, but let me explain. You see, the calories that are on food packages is actually calories with a capital C. The capital C represents a kilocalorie, or kcal, and it is a thousand calories with a lowercase c or small calories. Over time, the experts in the nutrition field realized the unit of calories was too small and therefore would make the number of calories in food too large, so they came up with a kilocalorie, also known as calories with a capital C. So how did they determine calories? Well, originally, they used bomb calorimeters to determine the calorie content in different foodstuffs. A bomb calorimeter is a device where food is placed into and then burned to determine how much heat is generated. Before we go into some of the issues with calories and the foods we consume today, let's talk about how calories are used conventionally. The traditional calories in, calories out model of weight loss is that if you take in more calories than you expend, you will gain weight. And if you consume less calories than you expend, you will lose weight. You can argue that this in its simplest form is true, but if you look at what it really means to consume calories and what it really means to expend calories, then this philosophy becomes extremely complicated. The point of the Calorie Conundrum podcast is to unpack some of these ideas over time, but let's continue with this conventional mindset. Atwater and other scientists use bomb calorimeters to determine calories in food and determine that there are on average... After accounting for calories used in digestion and calories lost in excretion, 9 calories in 1 gram of fat, 4 calories in 1 gram of protein, and 4 calories in 1 gram of carbohydrate. Also, alcohol, although not one of the three main macronutrients, contains 7 calories per gram. So to determine how many calories you consume, you just add the calories in the food you eat. To figure out how much energy or calorie are being expended requires a bit more information. 
First, you have to determine your basal metabolic rate, BMR, or your resting metabolic rate, RMR, also known as resting energy expenditure, REE. Both of these measurements determine how many calories your body burns while at rest and can be interchanged in usage for the purpose of determining calories out. The difference between BMR and RMR is that BMR is a more controlled measurement while the RMR also includes some light movement like using the restroom. The BMR can be measured directly by measuring the heat that comes off the body, but this is not easily accessible to the general population, so often BMR is measured via indirect calorimetry. Indirect calorimetry is often done by measuring the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide you breathe in and out. Your BMR is an important component in the equation of calories in calories out because BMR accounts for approximately 60% of the calories you expend. Another thing that affects the amount of calories you expend is called the thermic effect of food. This is the number of calories that are used in the digestion of certain macronutrients where protein has the highest thermic effect of food, carbohydrates next highest, and fats the least. Finally, you have physical activity. Physical activity can be broken down into two groups, exercise and non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT. NEAT is all the little unconscious movements you make like fidgeting, tapping your feet, or simply walking. Because getting an accurate measurement on all these metrics is almost impossible and certainly not accessible to the average person, scientists have made equations to simplify the process. They have created equations to estimate your BMR based on your age, weight, and height. They have also created equations to estimate your total daily energy expenditure, or TDEE. Your total daily energy expenditure is the number of estimated calories your body needs, which includes your BMR and activity levels. You can find calculators online that can estimate this information for you. I like these calculators because it gives you a general idea of what your body should require. If you use these calculators to find your TDEE, and you consume less than that number of calories and don't lose weight, then you know something may be wrong with your metabolism and you should investigate what it might be. Keep in mind, everyone is different and these equations are far from perfect. These equations are developed by doing studies on a group of people and averaging the numbers to come up with an equation to estimate either BMR or TDEE. Many times, the populations of these studies are limited by their diversity and the number of participants, so the average may not be representative for you. The list of problems with trying to determine how many calories you should consume or burn is long, and there are too many to name them all here. But I would like to give you a few more examples why the conventional calories in, calories out philosophy is flawed. First, the calories in foods are rarely measured anymore. According to the National Data Lab, most of the calorie values in the USDA and industry food tables are based on indirect calorie estimations made using the Atwater system. This means that instead of measuring the actual calories in foods, estimations are made based on the macronutrient components of the food. So they are guessing how many calories are in the food by using very outdated food measurement standards. As an example, David Baer and colleagues published a study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in 2008 titled Discrepancy Between the Atwater Factor Predicted and Empirically Measured Energy Values of Almonds in Human Diets. David concluded that, quote, Nuts are a food group for which substantial evidence suggests the Atwater factors may be poorly predictive, end quote. He found that whole almonds have about 20% less calories than the value calculated using Atwater factors. In another study, they found that pistachios had about 5% less calories than originally thought. Another main issue is understanding what consumption means. You may think that if you eat 500 calories, then 500 calories must be used by the body or it will be stored as fat. But just because you eat 500 calories doesn't mean your body will be able to digest, assimilate, and utilize those calories. Many things affect digestion, including the type of food, how much the food has been processed, how much fiber is in the food, what other foods are being consumed at the same time, how well you chew your food, how much stomach acid you have, if you are stressed, and the list goes on and on. There are many examples I could give, but I will save those for another time. Be on the lookout for a future podcast where I discuss the biggest myth in nutrition. The 3,500 calories equals one pound of fat myth. 
I hope you found some value in this episode. And if you did, let me know by liking, subscribing, and sharing this podcast. The goal of the Calorie Conundrum podcast is to expand the weight loss conversation to beyond just calories. And I hope you understand more what that means after listening to this brief podcast. And with that said, this is Coach Strick saying thanks for listening. And remember, when calories in, calories out doesn't work, that, my friend, is a calorie conundrum. This podcast, including Coach Strick and guests, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects for the use of any information contained herein. Coach Strick and or guests may recommend products or services in which they have a direct or indirect financial interest. To find out more, please visit www.calorieconundrum.com.